The Australian Medical Association is calling for a tax on sugary drinks to curb the nation's growing obesity problem. New data shows a whopping two-thirds of Australians are likely to be overweight by 2030, with obesity set to overtake tobacco as a leading cause of, de of disease. AMA WA President Dr Mark Duncan-Smith is with us. Thank you very much for your time. Doctor, it is a serious issue. How concerning is it to doctors? Look, it's very concerning, Monica. This is a great opportunity for the federal government to actually make a huge difference to the healthcare of, of Australians. Uh, essentially, what the tax would be, or excise, would be it would just increase the cost of a can of soft drink by 16 cents. And what that would do is raise $3 billion for the federal government over the next four years. But more importantly, if they don't introduce it, they'll have to fund $30 billion worth of extra medical care for those extra cases of diabetes, heart disease and strokes that otherwise are going to occur if they don't introduce the tax. What about Australians themselves? Should we be more proactive, take matters into our own hands? Well, look, I'd certainly encourage all Australians to be more proactive and get out there and exercise, uh, eat and drink less sugar. Um, but ultimately, sometimes the government does need to step in, much the same as with tobacco, for example. Unfortunately, um, nearly 30, just over 30% of Australians are currently obese. And if they don't introduce this tax, it's predicted that 60, just over 60% of Australians will be obese by the end of the decade. All right. What evidence is there, however, that a tax is effective in reducing sugar consumption? Yeah, just on, about 80 countries around the world have already introduced this tax and in all of those jurisdictions they've seen a decrease in the consumption of sugary drinks. Um, people should understand out there that a single can of soft drink has approximately 10 teaspoons of sugar in it. This is sugar that has no other nourishment, no other vitamins, no other minerals in it and all it does is leads to diabetes uh, through increased weight. So you're not suggesting a blanket tax on sugar, you're really just talking about a tax specifically on soft drinks? So it's soft drinks and uh, other drinks that are very high in sugar. Um, these are drinks that people sort of consume as a daily activity instead of just drinking water. So this is where the big calories actually come into the consumer of those sorts of products. Uh, this is where a big difference can be made to actually prevent care uh, or prevent disease. Uh, and as I said, otherwise what, by the end of the decade we're going to see double the amount of obesity in Australia and that's going to need $30 billion worth of extra funding by the federal government to deal with it, as opposed to $3 billion of extra income that they could get. All right, so the amount being suggested is 16 cents on a can of soft drink. Is that really enough to put people off buying sugary soft drinks, do you think? Yep, overseas um, jurisdictions that have done this have basically found that that actually reduces consumption by 30%. So again, that's a large number for really what is not a massive increase in cost, but it's that old situation where, for example, we saw this with tobacco, that with the tax it increased the, the price of a packet of cigarettes to the point where consumption went down. The cost and the consumption are directly related. This tax is, is common sense, it's preventative health care, it earns the federal government money and saves them ten times as much money. Dr. And ultimately, most importantly, it, it's best for the health of, West, of all Australians. Dr Mark Duncan-Smith, thank you for your time.